My name is Fergal Kearney. I'm representing Digicom here today. Uh, I said I'm only a, the new boy on the block. I'm only with Digicom a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a bit of background to who we are for those of you who don't know. Uh, Digicom are around in the technology business in Ireland for the last 15 years. Um, we're probably best known for two areas, which would be the first one would be uh, audio, visual, and video conferencing. Um, you know, we're a market leader here in that. Uh, the second area would be office technology. Um, multifunction devices, managed print service in that area of the business, and obviously we're a Rico main dealer for that. Uh, the third area of the business, which is under my remit, um, which Digicom have been involved in for the last six, seven years, but they brought me on board this year to drive it through, is on content management, information management systems, or in layman's terms, document management systems, as it would have been known as. And we are the Irish representative for uh, Laserfiche, who are based out of Long Beach in California. Uh, Laserfiche are uh, recognised by Gartner as a, as a very good player in this segment, and we're in the Gartner Mad Magic Quadrant, up against the likes of the big boys like IBM and EMC. Um, and you know, pure player in the whole document management, information, content management space. And Edwin here is here from LA. He'll take you through what they do and what the solutions are for the business processes that we're going to talk about. Um, I'm just going to focus really on the challenges that are out there in the marketplace at the moment for different organisations whether you're a public sector, financial service, or private sector, whatever you are, everyone's sharing the same sort of challenges. And there's obviously costs associated with all these challenges. You know, I was talking about earlier, the challenges of, of content, and you know, defining content or defining information. Uh, content is quite a vague word, uh, but if you think of everything, every file you can generate in a business, whether it be an email file, a Microsoft Word document, it could be a video conferencing file, you might want to record your meeting. It could be a, an audio file, web content, all this sort of content, huge amount of content in the business. Um, I was at a seminar last week where I was speaking as well, but Dermot Moore, who's the head information governance for uh, AIB group, you know, was showing some information there. And what was startling was, in the last six years, information output has grown by 10,000%. It's kind of hard to get your head around that figure. I was like, what's 10,000%? You know, the only 10,000% I've seen is my interest rates and my loans. But apart from that, you can't really put sort of, where does that, where does that come from? And he was talking about exabytes of data of information. Now, I didn't know what an exabyte was until last Thursday. You know, I'm working in technology business, but, you know, I'm not an IT person. My background's finance. And an exabyte, and he said, the amount of information that's been generated in the last 10 years would go from here to the planet Pluto and back 10 times if stacked on a pile which is kind of baffling, you know, how, and how do organizations manage that? The cost of managing that volume, and it's increasing daily. You know, all organizations here implemented email over the last 10, 15 years, and that has been solely responsible for the biggest information output in an organization. Because for the first 10 years of people using email, even to this day, I guarantee you go in offices next door and across the road, you'll go to every desk and be printed emails. It's great I got an email, and the first thing they did was to print it out and put it on a file for, to be lost down in a warehouse somewhere next year. You know, how do you find that content? You know, I worked in, in accounting practice for my sins, so I'm, I'm a reformed accountant, if you like. Um, and when I started out, as you do with an accountant junior, uh, you know, we need to find a file from last year. Or will you go down there to the, our off-site storage warehouse and find it? You could be gone for a week trying to find it. And it's managing that content, content and managing information and the cost of action, the time cost is absolutely massive. Uh, you know, there is a lot of surveys out there on, on, on Google and on the web on the amount of time. Some companies have tried to put a cost around the time. You know, you can pick a figure. You know, Edwin will talk to you about the number of time documents are copied. It, it, it's crazy stuff. The challenges of workforce and cost reduction, you know, the last three or four years we've got, pretty hitty, hit, got hit pretty hard as an economy. Uh, no need to go into that. But all organizations have looked at reducing costs. You can only reduce it so far without you know, actually impacting the service delivery that you're trying to achieve. Uh, you know, we're trying to get more productivity out of existing workforce. You, know, you can't, if you want to become more efficient, you throw more bodies at it, you throw more solutions at it. It's a whole cost question mark over that. Challenges of risk management. Risk is now the new area where people are looking at. Uh, most organizations, in fairness, have tackled costs in the last three or four years. Risk is becoming more and more because, you know, liability insurance, contingent policies have become prohibitive. You know, I'll give you an example. Bank of Ireland, they lost 20 laptops. So was it 18 months ago? 
those account details and those for their customers. You know, the cost of managing that risk, the cost of actually covering up the damage. Uh, you know, Catherine mentioned the costs of compliance. Their owners, there's a big burden on business now and compliance and regulation. The cost of non-compliance is even worse. Challenges of silo departments. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I was chatting with Aidan outside there from the SEAI. Most businesses have addressed technology needs in lines of business applications over the last number of years, whether it's finance, HR, procurement, CRM, you name it, there's a plethora of systems in an organization. Uh, you know, I, there's probably nobody in the room apart from a very savvy IT manager that can tell me, tell me exactly how many applications you have in your business. It's very tough. All those, all, those inf all those solutions, while they have addressed specific needs in the organization and helped those departments become more efficient and automate processes are already there, they're all generating new levels of information, all in their own different areas. Yes, they might use common shared drives to hold documents, but where's the structure around those? So there's, there's quite a big cost element in, in actually looking at that. You know, as a business to try and tackle this head on, you're going to have to identify and analyze your needs. You have to identify, you know, information governance and insurance. You know, the, the way the business has gone these days, you know, in, corporate governance and information governance, by the way, are two separate things. And uh, I got a lecture about this last week from um, Professor Neve Brennan from UCD. And she was talking about corporate governance. And as one guy said to me, corporate governance is, he wasn't being serious. I hope he wasn't being serious. He said, corporate governance is the ability to develop a policies and procedures in your business and separations of powers and accountability whereby you as a CEO have nothing to do and are responsible for nothing. Now, I hope he wasn't serious. <laughs> but what she did say was corporate governance, yes, you need to have co proper corporate governance in this day and age where transparency is demanded and expected. Um, but to underpin corporate governance, you need to have sound information governance policies and procedures. There's no point in having policies and procedures unless you actually implement them. And I, my own experience of this, I dealt with a, a national sporting body the last couple of years when I was doing rescue work. And um, they had policies and procedures for 10 years that were buried and filed on a back somewhere. And they had them, and they could tell the Irish Sports Council, the Department of Sport, that they had these, all these lovely policies and procedures, but they never actually implemented them. They were never checked on it. But now, because the pressure is coming on costs and funding, they're all being expected to show and demonstrate they are using these and implementing correctly. Risk management, we've already touched on. Compliance and ever-changing regulations. There's no need for me to tell you or, or <coughs> talk about this. You all have compliance issues in each of your businesses. Uh, whether you're public sector, financial services, you know, they're under a lot of scrutiny, obviously, over the last couple of years. You know, I've been out talking to insurance brokers and credit unions the last couple of months uh, just to see what the challenges they were having. And the insur as an insurance broker, insurance company, you know, they go and talk to you and say, look, I want to do your house insurance. That's fine. They take your details give you a price, they say a grand, and they issue you out with a certificate, and a check comes in, that's the end of it. That's just completely changed. Now they have like 14 or 15 documents that they have to use in order to give you a policy. So they have to gather your details, send them in, then they've got to send you out a suitability statement and terms and conditions, which the customer must then sign, saying, yes, I've looked at this, I'm happy with this, send it back. You've got to match that through with the remarket the insurance each year to get the best quote from different companies, get all their quotes in, match them, prove that they've got the best value for the client, keep all that documentation together, and then produce a certificate. So it's just, that regulation has just introduced another six steps into just an insurance broker. So if you multiply that out into everybody's business, you know, whether you're under the FDA, you're under <coughs> health and safety, <coughs> You know, FDA, pharmaceuticals, uh, health and safety, financial services, public sector, everybody's got regulation coming at them from everywhere. And it's because what's happened in, in society and in business society that this has happened. And, you know, rightly so, there needs to be greater regulation, but it's, it's, it's casting a huge burden, administration burden, on managers, IT managers, CEOs, and CXOs around businesses. Sustainability, you know, there's no point in implementing a solution unless it's going to be there for the future. You know, uh, Edwin will talk about this later on, how fast technology moves. It's frightening speed. Now, if you're going to implement a solution, and you probably have put solutions in your business which are now obsolete, it's trying to find the right solution going forward that's going to work with your business organization. Um, I'll go into these in a, a small bit more detail on what inf information governance is, what it involves, and how do we measure value, and how to prepare for the future based on a sustainability model. And when we talk about information governance, the four components 
uh, people policies, technology, and enterprise risk management. And at the center there, you'll see <coughs> a very important thing right now is uh, e-discovery. And this is becoming, because as a society, we're becoming more and more litigious now that if you look sideways at somebody in business, you're going to get sued. So e-discovery has raised its head, uh, and it's very, very important on how you manage documentation and how you freeze it for legal holds, etc. if you're under a uh, legal case. Uh, that's, you know, that's surrounded by transparent records management and business process management. And what I mean by that is obviously managing and automating your business process so actually delivering value. Um, but e-discovery has become massive business. Um, you know, the, one of the moments in the news is obviously the Quinn Group. There's documents and, well, I think it's the case in the Ukraine, they found servers that were smashed. They'll send somebody in to try and retrieve the hard disk. So, you know, and that's the one that's in the media at the moment. There's a lot you don't hear about. When we talk about people, the top one there, executive sponsorship. Catherine mentioned about getting a champion, an executive champion within a business. And, you know, we talk about consider usability, engage consumer in a strategy. You have to have everybody in your business buying into a solution you're going to put in. Um, and the buy-in is a phrase, you know, that's overused. Uh, and it's got to a stage now where people don't really listen to it anymore. I prefer a sort of term, invest. If you want to put in a solution in a business, you're going to have to invest in it. And why do you invest in, a business, in, a, in anything? You invest to get a return. So my job, obviously, as talking to organizations is to just demonstrate the return on investment to the decision makers, the CEO, the financial controller, the IT manager, but also to demonstrate the return on investment to the, to the end user. And you're probably asking yourself, what's the end user investment? You know, the finance guy will see, if I invest 10 grand and I save 20, then that makes sense. But how do you, <coughs> how do you demonstrate return on investment to an end user? If you make, you know, you talk to most end users that deal with information and deal with documents in a business. And if you can take away some of their frustrations, that's a return on investment. And a frustration is trying to find a file. It's as simple as that. They're, look, they're working on a, pro, on a project or a, a process in the business. They're looking for something the new was done last year and they can't find it. And they spend half their day or week trying to find this file. It delays their project. They get in trouble, all that sort of stuff. If you can take away that frustration and make their life easier, that's the return on their investment. Policies, just going back to what I said earlier, it, you need to have policies and procedures before you put in a solution. There's no point otherwise. Um, you need to have policies and procedures, again, that everybody's going to invest in, that are going to see a demonstrable return. Uh, you need to be standard across the business. You can't have all these different types of policies. There's no common theme. You're going to have to really look closely at that. And you may have all of existing policies and procedures, and it would be a good time before you consider a solution around this area that you, you know, revisit them to see if they're what you need going forward. And you've got to think about the future. Technology, the third part of this process. Rules-based structure, you know, you have to have rules around a solution if it's going to work properly. No point having a sandbox approach where everybody does what they want. That's what happened with file shares and network folders. You know, I, I chat to an ID, IT guy last week at the records management seminar. He said, yeah, no, we have everything in Windows Explorer. Great. you have any structure on it? No. That's great, but you could have a million documents in there. So you have to have rules around how you find stuff. <coughs> Otherwise, you just won't find it. SOA is service-oriented architecture. Um, in layman's terms, this is the ability to talk to other systems, uh, line of business applications like your finance and HR, your CRM. Uh, you need to have a solution that's going to communicate with all these so those applications themselves can draw up and down documents from the repositories and from the content management solutions. Enterprise risk management, we've already touched on this. Data is consistent, reliable, and available, most importantly. Um, IT guys have done a very good job of getting data secure and mining it. And most IT guys are very happy with the solutions they have. They continue to reinvest because they have to, because the data is growing all the time. You know, I said earlier, exobytes is now the new term. God knows what the next one will be because I'm, they're running out of dictionaries. Um, <coughs> control but dynamic, you have to have a dynamic solution. You have some needed solutions going to move forward with your business, but in a controlled manner. Uh, you can't let it spiral. You know, the smart solution answer, in our view, and this is a view of the as well, it solves, maximizes, adapts, reduces, and transforms. Just to go back onto this SOA part, and this is a, a crucial point. If you're going to put in any document management or content management solution in any organization, you need to have a talk to all your different applications. 
Now, you might have only have 10. If you're lucky, you only have 10 or 15 applications in your business. Some of the public sector bodies out there in larger financial services outfits have hundreds of applications. And especially businesses that have grown by acquisition. When you acquire another business, you're probably acquiring another set of applications. And you need to have a content management foundation under this that can talk to all these applications. So where you can deposit and control your documentation and records of the business. When I talk about this is where I talk about the, the sort of content management foundation. You know, it, it highlights maybe four processes here. And it's only four of hundreds in an organization. But to pick sort of one or two that maybe will resonate with some of you, and it's one I mentioned earlier as well this morning, um, accounts payable, and this is me coming from my finance background as well, uh, in accounts payable, typically on the purchasing function, function of a company, you'll all have a purchasing order solution, a purchase order process in your business, where somebody wants to buy a desk for 500 euro, great, it gets signed off by the department head or the financial controller, 500 euro, that's grand, great, the desk gets delivered, in comes the invoice in the post. The vast majority of organizations actually re-approve the invoice. So I would sit down with the financial controller and say, why are you approving the same thing a second time? You've already approved the purchase order. So why do you do it? So the invoice makes its way around the building to get signed off and stamped by the financial controller and possibly the CEO and God knows who else. And it comes back in and then they file that away with or without the purchase order. Um, you know, there's, there's too many steps in that process. If you have agreed to spend 500 euro as the boss, go off and buy the desk, there's 500 euro of signing a purchase order. He, should, he or she should never ever see that again. It's done and dusted as far as he, he or she is concerned, it's spent. As long as it's delivered, they're happy. The invoice comes in, you know, ideally you would capture this, in, this invoice on in electronic means, whether electronically from the supplier or you scan it on, it comes in the door in your post. And you get it to automatically through the finance system and your, your content system beneath it to automatically match against the purchase order and to go through the payment process. That alone has reduced the cost of processing a purchase invoice by two thirds, which is proven. There's a lot of companies, there's a couple in the room who've actually done it. Um, not with this solution, but they've, done, they've had imaging solutions with a specific finance system that's done this in the last 10 years. Um, HR onboarding or HR recruiting, <clears throat> again, it's a very document oriented process. You want to recruit a person or persons for your organization, you obviously you go out and do your advertising or recruit agents, you're getting CVs in. You could, and in the current environment, you could get a thousand CVs in for 10 jobs. You obviously have to look at those CVs, try and shortlist, interview process, or get the recruiter or the hiring manager, depends on how many people are involved in the process, narrow that down, first, second, third stage. There's documentation being generated at each stage of this process to hire a person. At the end of it, then, you've got to create an employment contract and create their employee record. And for those people that weren't successful, you know, the question is, how do you manage those documents? Do you retain them or not retain them? That's down to an internal records policy that you would have. But by automating that process, you're stopping the paper flowing around the business. You know, instead of having different file shares, the recruitment manager goes on holidays, there's an interview happening next week, where are the files? You know, you will have a HR system, but even they can't manage and control the documentations flying around the business place. Um, but in common with all the processes you have in a business, there's common, you know, there's, there's common components. You have to capture information firstly. Now, whether you do that by scanning it in or getting it electronically or creating the information yourselves, you know, whether it's Word or PDF, wherever it is, you have to capture it, classify it. You have to distribute the information to the people. Now, Edwin will talk about why the demands in business now have changed, whereby instead of you going and getting the information, you need to get it to come to you. Uh, and obviously, you have to store the information, store the documentation, and it has to be able to be searchable and retrievable. You know, there's, no me, there's, there's, no, there's no point in me telling you what the cost of rent is in Dublin in your office space. A filing cabinet takes up, what, three square foot? You know, I, I've, there's insurance brokers out there and firms that have got rid of all their back catalogue of files and basically have got rid of buildings, full buildings they didn't need anymore because of implementing a proper solution. But, you know, solution what ECM is, I'm going to let Edwin tell you about it. The outcomes you're going to look for when you deliver or, or engage in this process and this solution, you want to get transparency because it's demanded. 
by business and by public. Reliability, security, accessibility, and agility, most importantly, which Edwin will cover. And Edwin's going to shed some light and more deep knowledge in ECM than I am, so I'm going to hand over to Edwin. <laughs>